welcome back so in today's uh, session we will be discussing about the pawns so pawns will be discussed under the external features and internal features so what is this pawns actually so all of you know pawns is a part of the brain stem so it is uh, the center part of the brain stem which is present in between the midbrain and the medulla so this is the pons so why actually how did it uh, get its name as pons so pons actually it acts as a bridge which connects the two cerebellar hemispheres so this is the middle cerebellar peduncle which will uh, join the pons with the cerebellar uh, hemisphere so it acts like a bridge which will bridge across the two cerebellar hemispheres so in latin pons means a bridge so that is how it has derived its name and uh, coming to the location of the pons so this is located in the posterior cranial fossa so it is present in between the midbrain and the medulla so when we discuss about the external features of the pons we will discuss it under the following heading so what are the presenting uh, parts of pons so it has got two surfaces so the surface seen here is the ventral surface and uh, this is the dorsal surface and it has got two borders so this is the superior border and this is the inferior border so we will have a look at what are the features present on the ventral surface of the pons so this is the ventral surface of the pons and it is convex convex in shape and if you see carefully it is transversely striated so this is transversely striated so why are these transverse striations present so because the fibers which run from pons to cerebellum they will travel transversely like this so they will travel from pons through the middle cerebellar peduncle they will enter into the cerebellum so that is the cause for this transverse striations and then if you see in the midline there is a groove there is a groove this groove is called as basilar groove so why is it called as a basilar groove it is called as a basilar groove because it will lodge the basilar artery so you know the two vertebral arteries from either side they will unite to form the basilar artery which will run in this groove so that is how it has got its name as the basilar groove so those are the features which are present on the ventral surface of the pons so what are the cranial nerves which are related to the ventral surface so we know all the cranial nerves except the trochlear nerve will emerge from the ventral surface so what are all the cranial nerves in relation to pons the middle four cranial nerves that is 5 6 7 and 8 cranial nerves are related to pons so from where do they emerge out so you have got two junctions so the junction where the pons will meet the these are the cerebral peduncles so this is the upper junction and uh, the uh, junction where the pons meet the upper part of the medulla is called as the ponto medullary junction so at this ponto medullary junction this 6 7 and 8 cranial nerves will emerge so 6 7 and 8 cranial nerves so that is the abducens nerve facial nerve and the vestibulo cochlear nerve so in the junction between the facial nerve and the vestibulo cochlear nerve another nerve which is called as nervi intermedius that is the sensory branch of the facial nerve will emerge okay so from the ponto medullary junction from medial to lateral you have got the abducens nerve motor root of facial nerve sensory root of facial nerve which is also called as nervi intermedius and then you have got the vestibulo cochlear nerve which will emerge out from the ponto medullary junction now what about the fifth cranial nerve that is the trigeminal nerve so trigeminal nerve will emerge as two roots motor root and a sensory root so it will emerge out as two roots so medial mm is motor root and later to that you got the sensory root so if you just draw an imaginary line just later to the 
sensory root of the trigeminal nerve. So that is the point where the pons is meeting the middle cerebellar peduncle. So that is called as ponto cerebellar junction. Okay. So uh, that is the point from where the trigeminal nerve will emerge out. So it has got two roots as I told you, motor root and the sensory root. But the sensory root is larger and thicker in compared to the motor root. As you all know, trigeminal nerve is mostly sensory. So the sensory root is bigger in comparison to the motor root. So what are all the cranial nerves related? 5, 6, 7 and 8. 5 at the junction where the pons will meet the cerebral, middle cerebellar peduncle and 6, 7, 8 at the ponto medullary junction. So these are all the features you see on the ventral surface of the pons. Now we will have a look at the dorsal surface that is the posterior surface of the pons. Now you know the dorsal surface of the pons is related to the cerebellum. It is covered by the cerebellum. So it is separated from the cerebellum from a ventricle which is called as the fourth ventricle. So this is the floor of the fourth ventricle. So it is partly formed by the medulla and partly formed by the pons. So we are going to deal with the upper triangular part. So upper triangular part. So this part is formed by the dorsal surface of the pons. So what are the features we see in the dorsal surface of pons? So it is uh, forming the upper triangular part of the floor of the fourth ventricle and the features seen from medial to lateral side you see the median sulcus in the center and then lateral to this median sulcus you see one oval elevation this oval elevation which is called as the facial colliculus and lateral to this facial colliculus this area is called as the vestibular area and just above the facial colliculus in the upper end you see one area which is bluish gray in color that is called as locus ceruleus. So this locus ceruleus is connected with the reticular activating system and it is said to be a source for the noradrenaline. Okay. So and this uh, grayish uh, bluish gray discoloration is because of the melanin. Uh, pigment which is present in the nerve cells which are present beneath this area. So these are the features you see in the dorsal aspect of the pons. So you remember dorsal part of pons will form the upper triangular part of the floor of the fourth ventricle. So in order to discuss the internal structures we will take a section. So if you understand these external features it is very easy for you to understand the internal features. So we will take sections. So we will take two sections at two different levels. So one is at the lower level. So we are taking one section at the lower level and we are taking one at the upper level. So one at this level and one at this level. Okay. So uh, we will discuss what are all the features which are present. So first we will discuss the TS at lower level of pons. Okay. So we are taking a section at the lower level of pons. So at the lower level it is related to 6, 7 and 8 cranial nerves and if you take a section at the upper level it is related to the trigeminal nerve. So when we take a section we will see what is present in the grey matter and what is present in the white matter. But even before we go into that for the pons, the pons, when you take a section, it is divisible into two different parts. So, anterior or the ventral part is called as the basilar part and the posterior part or the dorsal part is called as the tegmental part. So, this is the basilar part and this is the tegmental part. Here, this is the basilar part and this is the tegmental part. So ventral part we are calling it as basilar part because it is related to the basilar group and uh, posterior or the dorsal one we are calling it as the tegmental part. So if you see carefully the both basilar part at lower level and upper level of pons is almost looking the same. It is almost the same. So when we study about the cut sections that is the 
transfer sections. So we will see what is present in the gray matter. Gray matter means all the nuclei which will make up the gray matter. And what are all the ascending and descending tracks which will make up the white matter. So we will study the bacillar part first. So this is the bacillar part. So what are the nuclei which are present? So these nuclei which you are able to see, these are called as pontine nuclei. Pontine nuclei. And you can see the fibers. So here you will have two different types of fibers. Longitudinal fibers and transverse fibers. So the, the ones which are running longitudinally and the ones which are running transversely. So what are all the fibers which you see here? The tracks which you see. You see the corticospinal tract. So you see the cortico nuclear fibers and you see the cortico pontine fibers. See cortico pontine, cortico nuclear and cortico spinal. So that means they are coming from the cerebral cortex. So through the cerebral cortex they run through the cerebral peduncles and they are reaching the Pons. So they are reaching the pons. So from the cortex they are reaching the pontine nuclei which are present in the same side of the pons. So those are called as corticopontine fibers. Now after they uh, terminate in this pon, uh, same side pontine nuclei the fibers again from here they will cross to the opposite side and they will reach the opposite side cerebellar hemisphere. So Corticopontine cerebellar pathway. Okay. So these are the ponto cerebellar fibers which are causing these transverse striations. So they are running transversely. So from opposite side pontine nuclei they are reaching the opposite side cerebellar hemisphere. Okay. Ponto cerebellar fibers. So these are the corticopontine fibers. Now what are these corticonuclear fibers? So from the cortex they travel through the cerebral peduncle and they will terminate in the cranial nerve nuclei of the opposite side. So of, of the opposite side. And what about this corticospinal fibers? So corticospinal fibers, they also through the cerebral cortex, they travel through the cerebral peduncle, through the pons and at the lower end of the pons, those will all diverge. Sorry, they will all Converge to form the pyramids. So this pyramids of the medulla and they will pass through the pyramids of the medulla. So corticospinal fibers, corticonuclear fibers, corticopontine fibers are the longitudinal fibers. What are the transverse fibers? I told you pontocerebellar fibers from pontine nuclei to the opposite cerebellum. So pontocerebellar fibers. So that is about the Bacillar part. So whether you take a section at the upper level or at the lower level. So this is at the lower level and this is at the upper level. Irrespective of where you are taking the section, the bacillar part will remain the same. There are no changes in the bacillar part. The same pontine nuclei and the fibers. The uh, transversely running fibers and the longitudinal fibers will be present. Now, whatever change is there at the two different levels is there only in this tegmental part. That is the dorsal part of the pons. Okay. So, we will see what is there in the tegmentum at the lower level. So, if you take the section of the tegmentum and that is the dorsal part at the lower level of pons. So, lower level of pons is related to 6th, 7th and 8th cranial nerve nuclei and you see here it is forming a facial colliculus and it is related to one area laterally we are calling it as the vestibular area so we will see how these are actually formed in the section so uh, where are this 6th 7th and 8th cranial nerve nuclei located so this is the 6th cranial nerve nucleus okay abducens nucleus and this nucleus which is present ventrolateral to the sixth nucleus uh, sixth nerve nucleus is the motor nucleus 
of facial now that is seventh cranial nerve nucleus and then you see there are two nuclei over here so these two nuclei these are the vestibular nuclei and you see uh, two nuclei which are present on either side of the cerebellar peduncle so present dorsally and ventrally these two are the cochlea nuclei so that is the dorsal cochlea nucleus and this is the ventral cochlea nucleus okay and then what are the other nuclei present you have got the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and then medial to the motor nucleus of the facial nerve you have got the superior salivatory nucleus and then lateral to the superior salivatory nucleus you have got one more nucleus which is called as nucleus tractus solitarius so these are all the nuclei which are present when you take a section at the lower level so sixth cranial nerve nucleus is abscissa nucleus and uh, this motor nucleus and superior salivatory and nucleus tractus solitarius are the nuclei which are related to the facial nerve and uh, these two vestibular nuclei and these two cochlear nuclei are related to the eighth cranial nerve that is the vestibular cochlear nerve so you get fibers from the vestibular nuclei you get fibers from the cochlear nuclei so they two unite to form the vestibular cochlear nerve so now you understood 6 7 8 cranial nerve nuclei are present in this section okay so now if you see carefully this is the motor nucleus and you see it is winding around the abscissa nerve nucleus so it is winding around the abscissa nerve nucleus so thus it is forming a elevation in the floor of this is the floor of the fourth ventricle so that elevation we are referring to as the facial colliculus so this is the facial colliculus which is produced by the winding of the motor fibers of the facial nerve around the sixth cranial nerve nucleus now later to that you can see these are the vestibular nuclei and those are related to the lateral most vestibular area so that is how you have to relate so next why uh, now i'll tell you why actually this uh, uh, seventh cranial uh, motor fibers are winding around this abscissa nerve nucleus so initially the uh motor nucleus of the facial nerve it is present at this place okay so it is present dorso lateral to the cranial part of the abscissa nerve so but it is uh, at a distance from the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve so now you know the facial uh, the face which is there the sensory supply will come from the trigeminal nerve and the motor supply will come from the facial nerve so if both of them are nearby so it will be easy for the reflexes reflex activities so what will happen is slowly this motor nucleus will migrate around the dorsal aspect of the abscissa nerve nucleus and to finally reach its final position which is near to the uh, spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve so in its course it will loop around the abscissa nerve nucleus so this process by which the motor nucleus will migrate towards its maximum sensory stimulation is called as neurobiotaxis it is referred to as neurobiotaxis okay so that is what is happening over here and that is how our facial colliculus is being formed so those are all the nuclei which are present in the gray matter now what are the ascending and descending tracts which are present at this level so when you take a section at the lower level in the para median position we have got three different tracts so that is medial longitudinal fasciculus okay mlf we call it as mlf then you have got the tecto spinal tract and then you have got the rubro spinal tract so from dorsal to ventral aspect if you see dorsal most you have got medial longitudinal fasciculus ventral to that you have got the tecto spinal tract and even more ventral to that you have got the rubro spinal tract remember it like mtr okay and uh, 
Next, what are the other tracts? So the one which is present lateral to the uh, ventrolateral to the uh, motor nucleus of the facial nerve is the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. And then if you see carefully, there is one important structure, conspicuous structure which is being shown at this level. So this is called as the trapezoid body. Trapezoid body. So how is this trapezoid body formed? So we have got the cochlear nuclei, these are dorsal and ventral cochlear nuclei. So the fibers which emerge from this cochlear nuclei, they will uh, decussate. They will decussate with each other and cross each other in the midline, thus forming the trapezoid body. So this is how the trapezoid body because uh, it is trapezoid in shape, it is called as a trapezoid body. I repeat, they are formed by the decussation of the fibers which arise from the cochlea nuclei. Okay? And then the other uh, uh, tracts which we see is, this is the medial lemniscus. This is the medial lemniscus. So if you remember in the medulla, I have drawn this medial lemniscus which was oriented longitudinally. But now in the pons, it is uh, vertically Sorry, it is transversely oriented. So, it is transversely oriented. In the medulla, I have drawn it like this. And in the pons, we were going to draw it like this. And then, lateral to that, you have got the spinal lemniscus. So, how is the spinal lemniscus formed? By the lateral and anterior spinothalamic tracts, which ascend upwards, they form the spinal lemniscus. Medial lemniscus is formed by the sensory decussation at the level of the Medulla. We have seen uh, the fibers crossing over from the nucleus cuneatus and gracilis, thus forming this medial lemniscus. So these are the, uh, uh, I mean the tracks which you can see in the section of the pons at its lower level. So we have seen the 6th, 7th and 8th cranial nerve nuclei. And the tracks which we are seeing here in the paramedian position, we have seen the medial longitudinal fasciculus, tectospinal tract and rubrospinal tract. And we have seen the medial lemniscus and lateral to that we have seen the spinal lemniscus. And uh, you have seen the uh, spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. And the important structure we have seen is the trapezoid body. Trapezoid body. Now, we are going to take a section at the upper level of pons. So, we are taking a section at the upper level of pons. So at this level we are taking a section. So when we take a section at this level, when we are taking a section at the lower level, the fourth ventricle is open. So when you are taking a section at the upper level, so it is closed, it is roofed by a structure which is called as superior medullary velum. So it is roofed by a structure which is called a superior medullary villa and this is the fourth ventricle. The cavity of the fourth ventricle is reduced. Okay, so this is the cavity of the fourth ventricle. And uh, what what are the features when you see you take when you take a section at the upper level of pons? So I, as I told you, no much changes will be there in the basilar part. The basilar part is same. I, I upper in the lower level and at the upper level. So when uh, only changes occur in the tegmental part. So what are those changes? So when we compare it, you know here it is related to the 6th, 7th and 8th cranial nerves. When you take a section at the upper level, it is only related to the 5th cranial nerve. So you see only the 5th cranial nerve that is trigeminal nerve nuclei. So what are the nuclei? So medial most is the motor nucleus of the tri uh, trigeminal nerve motor nucleus and lateral most is the chief sensory nucleus of trigeminal nerve and uh, you see in between there are one fibers where the nucleus is not being ref uh, is, is not being represented here that is because this these are the fibers which are coming from the mesencephalic nucleus which is located in the midbrain so we are only showing you the fibers. So, uh, motor fibers, fibers from the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and fibers from the chief sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, they will unite to form the 
trigeminal nerve which will emerge through the junction between the uh, bones and the middle cerebellar peduncle. Okay. So, that, uh, or the only nuclei related here are the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve that is the fifth cranial nerve. So, what are all the tracts which are present? So, in the paramedian position, the same tracts. Dorsal most you have got the medial longitudinal fasciculus, ventral to that you have got the tectospinal tract and even ventral to that you have got the rubrospinal tract. Now, here if you see, we have got four lemniscae which are formed here. Here you have got only two lemniscae, but here we are having four lemniscus. So, uh, medial most is the medial lemniscus. Next, you have got the trigeminal lemniscus. Then you have got the spinal lemniscus and lateral most you have got the lateral lemniscus. So you know medial lemniscus is formed by the sensory decussation and you know spinal lemniscus is formed by the upward continuation of the spinothalamic tracts. Now what about this trigeminal lemniscus and lateral lemniscus. So here we have seen the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. So that is not being shown in this section. So this upward extension of the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve from here it will pass through the thalamus, the trigeminothalamic tract. So that will form the trigeminal lemniscus. Now what about this lateral lemniscus? Here we have seen the trapezoid body. Now in this section there is no trapezoid body. So the upward continuation of the trapezoid body is the lateral lemniscus which is related to the auditory pathway. So from medial to lateral you have got the medial lemniscus trigeminal lemniscus, spinal lemniscus and lateral lemniscus. Now how do you remember these? So there is one mnemonic which is called as my tongue speaks lung. Okay. So my medial lemniscus, tongue, P, trigeminal lemniscus, speaks, spinal lemniscus, lung, lateral lemniscus. Okay. So that is the arrangement of the structures. And only cranial nerve nuclei which are related at this level are the Fifth cranial nerve nucleus. Okay, so that is about the section of the pons at the upper level. So the major differences, if we see at the lower level, we have got the six, seven, and eight cranial nerve nucleus. At the upper level, we have got only fifth cranial nerve nucleus. And at the lower level, you have got a trapezoid body. At the upper level, there is no trapezoid body. At the lower level, you have got only two lemniscus. At the upper level of pons, you have got the presence of four lemniscus. So, these are the major differences at, uh, uh, in the section of the pons at the lower level and the upper level. So, we will now have a look at the blood supply of the pons. So, as I told you, the basilar artery which is passing through the basilar groove will give rise to pontine branches. Pontine branches. And... Uh, here in the uh, lower part it will give rise to one artery which is called as ICA. That is anterior inferior cerebellar artery. So the blood supply of pons is through the pontine branches from the basilar artery and the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. So for uh, some points of interest in relation to pons. So you know the Pons is related to three arteries at three different levels. In the basilar groove, it is related to the basilar artery. And at its lower border, it is related to this ICA, that is anterior inferior cerebellar artery. And at its upper border or the superior border, it is related to superior cerebellar artery. Okay. And at its lower border, it is related to anterior inferior cerebellar artery and as well as to the 6, 7 and 8 cranial nerves. So with this we complete the total structure of pons that is the external features and internal features. So thank you for watching.